and welcome to this month's session, which is all about breaking into visual effects. We figured, as it's that time of year when you're getting your showreels together and coming up towards the ends of your degree, that it would be really cool if we could get a bunch of artists in who are new for, to the industry for a chat about how they're getting on and how they got those roles. Um, so our lovely friends over at award-winning Blue Bolt have been kind enough tonight, thank you so much Blue Bolt, for releasing Richard, Sebastian and Daniel from their extremely busy schedules, they're incredibly busy bees right now at the moment, to come along and have a chat with um, our education manager, Nikki Morris and our very own new genius one Salazar um, we have a visual effects supervisor and two junior artists here tonight who will take any questions from you or comments using the hashtag the usual hashtag TF sessions I will be up again at the end of the chat um, to fill those questions that have come through on those channels so over to you guys thank you Bex Welcome, guys, to the foundry. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you very much. So, well, let's actually start with you, Richard, and how you started and about the Wolf. Uh, well, I, uh, my background is I actually graduated in graphic design. I've worked, worked in that industry for a while, got into visual effects around 2008, um, joined Blue Bolt a year ago as a supervisor. Um, I've worked at some large facilities. I've worked at some of the smaller facilities. Personally, I'm a much bigger fan of working at the sort of smaller size companies such as Blue Bolt. Um, they're, they've been running since 2009, founded by some former MPC staff, um, work on high-end television and, uh, and film work. We've won a number of awards for the work, some BAFTA and VS awards. Um, yeah, got a big break working on Game of Thrones season one, and yeah, we we've got a core staff of about forty people, um, two of whom are with me this evening. <laughs> cool. Um, all right. So actually, I just realised something. You don't have a mic. <laughs> <laughs> Bex, can we get that? <laughs> there you are. <laughs> that 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 makes life. There you are. Uh, live showing. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we are live. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, shall we start with Dan? And yes. Okay. How are yeah. you? How did you get into this? How did you start it? Um, back in 2011, I was doing a uh, foundation degree in Exeter uh, in lens-based media. When I, I, I'd always been interested in VFX from, from Avatar, I think. I saw Avatar. And I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. So I, I shopped around, Googled everywhere, and I, I found all the VFX industries, like all, all, the, new stu all the studios. Um, and I also found After Effects, did a lot of After Effects tutorials. And um, then I found Nuke, like just naturally after finding, like seeing that was the, the more professional tool that we use. Um, and then I, I got a bit lucky. I, I emailed Frame Store Commercials and was like, "Can I can I do some work experience or can I have some advice on getting into the industry?" And yeah, they they gave me a week's work experience, which then turned into a, a into a runner's job, where I started uh, started training as a paint and rotor artist uh, using Silhouette and Nuke, which then turned into um, a full time uh, uh, paint and rotor job, and then I left Frame Store um, as a as a paint and road to artist at Blue Bolt, where I still am as a junior compositor. That's quite cool. So you have gone through almost the whole staging. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've done that. I've done the whole the like, whole spectrum so mm. far. Cool. So Seb, how yes. about you? All right. So um, my whole journey started uh, when I did like three years of uni back in Sweden. I studied uh, digital media. And um, that's kind of where I realized VFX was what I wanted to, to work with. So uh, after that, I did one year of um, uh, Hyper Island uh, School in Stockholm. Uh, and during that time, I um, you know, worked on my show reel, and I got in contact with uh, Blue Bolt um, and just said, "Hey, I'm 
Uh, I'm very interested in the VFX industry. I especially like the the stuff you do because you know I'd, I'd seen Game of Thrones season one and you know. Um, so um, and and I emailed them saying that um, I'm I'm going to be in London for a week um, in in a month and I would love to just come by your your studio to just see what it's like pretty much and. Um, uh, you know, luckily enough, uh, that was a bit of a slow period for Blue Bolt. So uh, they 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 slotted me in for for a little quick visit, and uh, you know we got to talking, and they showed me some of their uh, breakdown reels, and I showed some of my stuff, and I mentioned to them that you know a few months from them I was gonna need uh, a three month internship uh, for for my education, and um, they ended up emailing me back saying confirming that yeah come come do your internship at us and um, so o after those three months I uh, got hired as a freelance roto artist and then slowly progressed and uh, I'm now a compositor there cool so that is how, how long has it been I've been at Blue Bolt for a bit over three years, three years. now cool. so the show reel we have from you is yeah. actually so that's that's um, a, a bit of everything I've worked on uh, at Blue Bolt so far. Cool. S yeah. Is it a continuous like evolution? So even if you've got a job, should you continuously update your show reel? How does that work? Is it? Or do you do you just keep <laughs> on with the first one that you produced? Uh, of course, you should always have up to date stuff in your show reel, and and um, you know, or you should always have your best stuff in your show reel, and. Uh, I've 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 kind of been luckily en enough, you know, not to need a showreel for anything uh, until we did this thing today. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, th this is my first showreel I've I've made since you know um, applying for the position in Blue Bolt uh, many years back. So the application process, obviously lots of people know um, many of the big facilities, you know, the, the kind of, um, you know, multi-site, thousands or hundreds of employees. You're a 40-person company. Uh, is the application process different? So if you're trying to apply for a junior position, should you apply any differently? Is there any, any advice, that, you know, in your kind of application process that people should be aware of? Uh, no, I think uh, all the all the main points you should bear in mind are, are the same for uh, whichever facilities you you apply to. Uh, um, you know, all the same rules apply to how you present yourself and your showreel and how you communicate um, your work and your experience. Um, I mean, the only difference really is what you know what you expect out of the experience of working at, at a larger facility versus a, a smaller one. Um, but yeah, the 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 core rules are still the same. So what are you guys looking for? So what makes an awesome reel? <laughs> short. Keep it short. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You want you want you want 30 seconds of your best stuff. You don't want a, you don't you don't want 2 minutes of good stuff for the first mm. 20, good stuff for the last 20. Just cut it down to that. You just mm. want the the best stuff. Yeah. I'd say. Yeah. And I think, you know, t tailor your reel to the position you're applying to. Don't apply for a roto job with a compositing reel. Um, yeah. Anything else, Richard? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, Taylor. Certainly, if it, you know, if you've done a, uh, if you have background doing a broad range of things as a generalist, that's that's great. I mean, it's nice to have that in a separate reel. But if you're, you know, applying for a junior role, then you need to demonstrate work as as a your ability to to do those junior junior artist tasks. So, so in that sense, I think for all the students and anyone that's starting, sometimes it's difficult to understand what those roles are. I think because you don't do them necessarily. Mm. So it's always, I'm going to be a compositor or a 2D artist, or I'm going to be a 3D guy. So I know rigging and I knew everything in, on it. Mm. But actually, when you're actually starting on in the industry, there is a few positions where you actually really start your job. Um, so Roto, yeah, I mean, it's in, in, absolutely. Mm -hmm. In 2D, you're, yeah. you're not you're not going to come out of a, a you know a, an education and go straight into a composing role. You'll usually start in paint and roto, mm -hmm. um, or even as a runner. Even as a runner, yeah. Uh, you know, expect ex expect, expect to be a runner. To be honest, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it is. It is. If you're lucky enough to get a, a paint and roto or a tracking job straight yeah. out the out the gate, then absolutely. Well, you did better than me. So. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, it is, it is a process to get there. You're not going to be working straight on a, you know, a Marvel or Star Wars shot <laughs> straight, out of, straight out of university. Uh, and it's important to get those core skills. You know, it's, it's very important to do your time in those, in those junior roles to, to get those core principles down before you know, you'll be tested with, with more and more advanced roles. Yeah. And you know, I, I came in thinking, oh, I, I, I can give me these bigger shots. I know how to do these. And, and no, I, I <laughs> didn't. I, I didn't. Under, I was too inexperienced to know how inexperienced I was. It was mm. Yeah, you've got to you, that process of training your eye and and understanding the the process of of how to how to develop those large shots is something that takes a number of years to to learn. Well, there's um, there's. There's, only, there's so much. There's only so much you can learn from university or from online tutorials, like the production side of it. Mm -hmm. You, you will always. You'll, you'll never be able to learn how to. You can. You can manage your time to a certain degree with mm -hmm. like with uni deadlines, but when you get a real deadline, you have a producer with a client on their back. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. You, you don't have pressure until you've got five minutes to roto 400 frames. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I like that example. How, do, how does that feel? So going out of education or getting your first job, so how, what is real life like? You know, who is on your case? You know, what, what kind of, what's, you know, what's your day like? Um, you know, do you just kind of get to own your shot and work on it and then deliver it and the client loves it? Is that how that works? <laughs> no. <laughs> Again, you're lucky if that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I've, I think one of the, like, biggest lessons to learn as early as possible is that like your 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 shot is not your baby you know it's it's um, the whole industry of VFX is a team effort and y you you work on e every shot together you know as mm -hmm. a company and um, try try to not like have an ego about it and because you know you, you you might you finish your shot and publish it and feel like this is the best thing anyone has ever done um, but you know the fact of the matter is that shot's gonna go through another 15 versions or so until the director is happy. Um, so you just be you know prepared for that and mm. appreciate the the learning experience that that is for mm. for each individual shot. Yeah, it's it's uh, yeah learn to take criticism absolutely and it's well it, and never take it personally either. It's it's all mm. just part of the process. To everyone's just trying to. Make the workers, uh, you know, the best, the highest possible standard that they can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's not a criticism on you or your abilities. It's, it's, you know, feedback on the specific shot. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's one of the main things with students that is a bit different to be in the industry. Mm -hmm. so when you are doing your showreel as a student, you are having the guidance of your teacher, which mm -hmm. probably knows a lot and is giving you the best guidance on the whole mm -hmm. thing. But at the end, it's your work and you're giving the last final word on mm -hmm. what is the quality that you want or the type yeah. of thing that you decide or the look of the whole shot. Yeah. Once you get into the industry, <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. is completely out of your hands in Absolutely. a sense. Yeah. <laughs> there are many, many people further yeah. up the food chain that need to approve your shot and these are uh, you know, very experienced people with very, uh, very critical eyes that, that uh, yeah, need, to, need to sign off your work. <laughs> so knowing that, then now we know kind of what you do there. The, what do you expect? So if you're going to be a roto artist and everything, what do you expect from them? Shall we have a look at some your showreel examples, bits and pieces? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I put together just, uh, these are just some old shots that I grabbed out of uh, my old roto reel. Um, just demonstrating that the way that you can communicate what your contribution to the shot is here, show your original plate, there's the mat, here's the, the review that would have been done for the, the roto. Here, this was a cleanup task, so it wasn't necessarily obvious what had been done. I just highlighted the work that needed to be done there. Show the mat, show my final cleanup. Um, it's not really relevant in this to show the final composited shot because I wasn't doing any of the compositing. Um, you know, if you if you are lucky enough to get access to your uh, the plates of your uh, of your roto work and, and your and, and your mats, then that's that's what you need to show, as that's communicating the part of the shot that you contributed. So, yeah, because obviously at uni you learn a lot of different stuff, so it's very clear to point out what you did in the shots instead mm -hmm. of showing the big, final, big road that you want to do. But yeah, <laughs> I don't know. We all, we, all, we all eventually want to have all the big flashy, you know, showy shots yeah. on our showreel, yeah. and that you know you will get there eventually. But uh, yeah, if if you're you know if if your contribution is doing roto on that, then then show show that that was the part that you contributed. 
Yeah, so, something's going to be off if you are uh, a year into the industry and you've got these flashy comp shots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nev never going to happen. But mm. So, yeah, highlight what you've done, like, like Rich says, mm. because otherwise it, it, um, it creates like a, like a false kind of sense to a supervisor or whoever's looking at the showreel mm. because they, if, if you're lying or if you're not being completely truthful about what you've done, but uh, it's or if it's if it's not like exactly clear what you've done, there's a bit of like, oh, what else are they they uh, they saying? What mm -hmm. else is what else is incorrect? Yeah, and it's an important part of the role as well is to be able to clearly show what what it is that you've uh, what it is that you've done in the shot, and this will come up in in dailies where you have to sit and show your latest version and say, okay, this is what I've changed. So it's 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 the, your first chance to demonstrate that you can you can commu clearly communicate what you've done. Uh, so we also have a sample for compositing one. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say something before we actually put it on about music. Well, we... <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, yeah, as, as, you, as you can see, we've muted the music on all of this. This will usually be the case when anyone's looking at your reel, so don't, don't kill yourself trying to find the, the great track to, uh, to cut your reel to. Um, but this, I mean, this is some old work, but this is just to really demonstrate uh, doing a breakdown. So I'm showing the finished shot here. Here's my plate. And there you go, in two seconds I've shown everything that was uh, all the breakdown of the layers for the comp there. So it can be done very quickly. The people that are watching this, they've, you know, they've, they've got trained eyes, they understand, um, uh, they understand uh, this, this process. You're not, you're not doing this real for your friends to sort of show uh, what To explain you've done. what your job is. This yeah, is to show yeah. You. <laughs> exactly. Um, and you know, there's not, nothing worse than sitting and, and having to sit through 20 seconds of wipes of someone showing just one shot with, with every single layer that was in there. It just, yeah, keep it brief, and <laughs> communicate it efficiently, and then move on to your next shot. Cool. Uh, is there anything else from you guys on that sense in the show reels? <sighs> show reels? No. <laughs> um, like, especially with, uh, with roto show reels, I suppose. I, because I work, I work alongside a lot of like new uh, paint and roto artists, like just day to day. Especially as like a, as a recently uh, promoted paint and roto artist, I kind of know. Uh, I, I sometimes get tasked with, like looking after them. They sit next to me and I show them like like uh, some just basic pipeline stuff of how uh, roto at blue bolt is done. But so um, it's really obvious to me very quickly if someone is bad at roto so if they've done a full like one shape for a person moving or uh they've just blurred the edges too much and it's just like because you can hide everything with a blur mm. not, not so much <laughs> in uh, in uh, film film tv roto yeah so keep keep your shape small that's all i'll say just keep your shape don't, don't blur <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, don't do mm. big things but it's, it's um yeah so maybe you can you could do like a screenshots of um of the of the roto shapes these days I know, i've seen a lot of reels that you can have like a like a screen recording of the shapes and that's that's another really way actually showing spines yeah, yeah. just yeah. to show that you have those uh, yeah. those kind of core skills of yeah. uh of roto because i mean mm. you can you can kind of hide things with keys as well you could key something and say you rotoed it mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I i i don't believe anyone's that dishonest but <laughs> I, I would hope not but mm. I think something else we already touched on is that you know keep it short. Have it have it be your highlight reel and not your complete collection. Mm. And so self editing, like you know, we were talking about it earlier. But also, um, you know, so self editing is important. But we talked a lot about roto, and obviously, you know, it's not the funnest part of the job. <laughs> but um, working for a small company, do you do do you get to do what's what's that like? Is do you get more varied work? I know Dan, you worked in a, a larger facility. Mm. How is that different working for a smaller company? Well, at a, at a smaller company. Because uh, there's usually there's less there's a lot less people to do all the work. You've all, you've got um, you're you're jumping between projects, you're jumping between tasks, all within your like wheelhouse. But you're you're still you could do a bit of roto on one show and then do a bit of paint on something else, or you could do like a like a temp comp or a slap comp for something really quick. And it you just slowly build up more skill. I was at I was at a big facility for nearly three years, and I learned I've learned so much more in less time. A smaller company just working on a job, working like back and forth, 
with people, um, especially when you're, if you're working with different supervisors, they have different ways of doing things. So you, you pick up these little tips, you pick up how to use a node differently, you're like, you, you pick up a different merge uh, um, process. So yeah, I, I, it's, it's a lot more involved in a smaller company, yeah. I suppose. Because you're not you're working with uh, twenty people around you instead of fifty. I mean, maybe you're even working yeah. with like four mm. or five people on a project. Some some projects of yeah. like five people on a project, and yeah, instead of like two hundred, three hundred on these giant like transformers blockbusters. <laughs> So going into that, we talk, you know, talked about um, not too many spaceships and robots when you're submitting a reel. But the the kind of jobs that you do, do we just create, you know, spaceships and aliens and transformers in this <laughs> industry? Like, what what's the kind of, you know, you guys worked on Game of Thrones, which is visually stunning. Um, how, you know, that's not all robots. So what's what's the key to that kind of work as an artist? I mean, I've 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 done those shows where I've got the robots and explosions on my reel just because you know they are they are fun. I mean, they're but but the reality is that that's not going to be sort of most of your work. I mean, sort of three quarters of your work on a day to day basis will be invisible effects. Um, and if you know if we're doing our job well, no one should be able to see what we've done. Uh, you know, it's it, those. Mm. I think there's a beauty of the job. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's great. I mean, it's great watching those big showy movies with robots and dragons and explosions. But there's probably a thousand other VFX shots in there that you just never even realise were VFX shots. Um, yeah, that's that's when we're doing our job well. Mm. And that, and that's a m like major part of our job too. You know, like for for every one robot shot you get, <laughs> you get twenty. That's just you know a, a, a background extension or. Mm. You know, Mm. Um, it's particularly yeah. the uh, the entry level stuff that you'll be doing. If you're doing prep work for maybe the first year, I'd mm. say, like you're removing wires from a period piece or the, that like a watch or something. So it's it's the hidden stuff that no one ever sees. You're adding smoke. You're adding chimney smoke. A lot of chimney smoke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like someone had to do a lot. <laughs> I mean, that's a rite of passage, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You do chimney. <sighs> <laughs> Cool. So, what do you think? Not that you have been in the industry for a while. Uh, what do you think was the f thing that shocked you the most from being a student or starting, and now that you're there? So, what was that first thing that you thought, "Oh, this is completely different"? To probably, uh, probably time management for me, particularly. I think we. Um, when when you're at uni, you kind of set your own deadlines to a point where like mm -hmm. you you have uh, you have a, a project deadline at in like a couple of months, so you you have all that time. You sit and play Xbox until nine o'clock, then you do some work at. But like you at uh, 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 a company on a like a, in the real world, you're working nine to six, maybe a few hours more. You sometimes work in weekends, but you've got um, you've got a set amount of time for your tasks. Mm -hmm. And yeah, normally a producer or your production assistant is is on you about keeping to that schedule because else if you if you mess up, especially if you're doing roto or prep, that's being passed on to someone else. The same with uh, if you're doing 3D, if you if you're a tracker, which is like an entry level um, 3D position, if you're if you're tracking, they need that for for the for the 3D stuff for uh, free, for 2D projections. So if you're taking too long, if you're not managing your time correctly, you're going to throw off the whole pipeline. And everyone else, if, if you're a day late, it makes everyone else a day late. Mm -hmm. that, that is actually quite interesting what you just said, which I find very interesting, is that actually your junior position is actually the start of the pipeline mm -hmm. of a shot. So you actually, your work impacts a lot on what is coming. So it's quite important to be good at it and Absolutely. learn a lot through it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get, yeah. get quick at roto, get quick at yeah. paint, get quick at tracking. Just speed is, is the essence, and, but being good at, at speed, mm -hmm. you kind of have to find that balance, I suppose. Yep. Yeah, and those those deadlines are, are real. You know, that movie will have a slot when it's due to go into the cinema. That that television episode will be going out on that <laughs> date. So, yeah, uh, you, you yeah you, you talk to anyone and there'll be a, a, a nightmare story you're staying up till three a.m. Yeah, on mm. deadline the, day. Those deadlines yeah. don't get pushed. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still the same amount of work to get through. And so that is kind of the the, the most shocking one. What do you think is the best part of being an artist? I think I mean um, 
to me, it, it's that every day is unique. Every shot you get is is a unique experience. And and you know, we use this, uh, this term creative problem solving, <laughs> and uh, it, that that's really what it all comes down to in the end. You know, um, no day is the same, and um, you you go into work every day not knowing what to expect, but you know by the end of the day you will have learned something new or several new things. Mm. And it, it's, it's, uh, it's an industry where you uh, can't help but cr you know, keep growing every day. Cool. Yeah, there's th and there's also just still that great thrill of seeing your finished work up on a big screen or, or on the television. It's um no, see, seeing your name on the big screen is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's all you care about. <laughs> that, 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 that first one especially though you go with the camera to oh, cinema. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 hundred blurry photos of like a credit you can just make out on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Prepare well, for that. That's the uh we'll that's have the that selfie thing. on our first yeah, ever yeah. Yeah. first ever credit on a on a movie. <laughs> Cool. That, um, that leads us on quite nicely to the credits and, you know, finding, finding, you know, are you, do you as an artist have to sit through the credits? Should you sit through the credits? <laughs> oh, right. It's in your contract normally now, isn't it, these days? So you, have, you have to sit through the credits. <laughs> I personally, I'm 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 usually the last person to leave the cinema. I, I always sit through all the credits at the end. I like seeing which VFX houses have worked on the show. Uh, it's also nice seeing your friends' names up there and thinking, oh, I know that person, yeah, that's so-and-so that I work with. Um, and it's, it's useful as well because there might be names of companies in there that you're not familiar with and you think, oh, okay, that's interesting. I've looked into who that person, you know, who that company is. Uh, and that's just a, a, a good way of finding out who the, who the active VFX houses are. And, you know, that might be someone you're applying for a, a job with in a, uh, in a year's time. That, that's interesting. So it's, I think one of the major issues with that is that people don't know all the companies, is it? Mm. The, 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 that is the big thing for obviously We all know who ILM is, even if you're starting, ILM is an icon yeah. on the whole thing. Uh, but actually, there is so many companies that actually work on all these shows yeah. and on the different mm. stuff. And it's how artists, how junior people actually start finding th about these companies. Yeah, because because you you go to the cinema and you see these big films, you know, and then you have ILM and there's a bunch of names, but then you have you know five more companies credited mm. that you might have never heard of, mm. uh, but that still work on those same big films. Mm. Mm. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, like um, movie credits. It's a yep. it's a great resource for finding new companies. Yeah. IMDb. Uh, so uh, yeah, IMDb. IMDb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, just uh, you know, whatever uh, city you want to work in, just type in visual effects <laughs> company London or visual effects <laughs> company Vancouver, and you. Yeah, you Google know. Google is amazing as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. like, like it just it's so helpful. Like when I started, there was it was quite difficult. You had to really have to search for these places. But now mm -hmm. there's so many blogs about it. Like supervisors blog, FX artists they they blog. They tweet tweets at, like Twitter's huge around the industry as well, mm. and it's it's but so helpful for finding these tiny companies, especially like if you're looking at the credits, you see oh such and such I've never heard of those. You can just Google them, and mm. they're right there. So you should definitely look outside of movies too, right? Because our industry is made up of like lots of creative content and things like that. So like look outside of kind of the cinema and look at, you know, tele not just television credits, but if you see a cool shot or a cool commercial, mm. um, you know, have a little look um, because they might be some of the less well-known names um, and you guys I think have definitely done a great job of like selling the benefits of working at a smaller company mm -hmm. and as a smaller company resource wise you know obviously you don't have massive outreach teams and things like that so um, you know what is your approach to kind of you, you obviously do a great job of taking on sort of young fresh talent um, you know as a business is that a conscious decision for you? Uh, well, I think you know we still we still get enough people that find us, and we get enough applicants coming in that uh, we have uh, you know a, a wealth of CVs to to look on when we need to when we need to start recruiting. Um, it's easier to have have your CV seen, I think, at a at a company of blue box size. I know that when I was trying to break in, sending my CVs to the large facilities, uh, that was a lengthy process. Um, because you know you might be on a pile with a uh, hundred other artists who are all trying to get the same role. Um, yeah. Uh, anything to add to that, guys? I think no, the I think the, the, the uh, we 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 nurture the uh, 
Yeah, we nurture that getting in runners and, um, you know, especially when, when, we, we, when we have time to, to get in students as well, to show them around as these, mm. uh, you know, just, just to help inspire people. These might be people that will come work for us, come uh, at some point in the future. Uh, I think that's definitely, you know, definitely something to note. Like, Seb, you mm. know, not that you want people rocking up off on the off chance, well, yes, but, a you know, he's a, he Seb's works. a great example of mm. your guys' kind of open-mindedness to kind of inviting people in and kind of sharing the knowledge. And I think that's important about this industry as well. You know, there's lots of, lots of amazingly talented people, and if you ask in a nice, uh, polite way <laughs> and have the right approach, mm. then I think there's a lot of knowledge to be shared and people are willing to share it. Mm. Uh, so, so I think one, one good point there is obviously one thing is your show on what we talk about, kind of the technicalities of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is, a, I think, two more s sides in here that people should actually kind of know. One is obviously come around and try and know people and be a nice guy, yeah. obviously, <laughs> or girl. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. realised it before I yeah, finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and be nice, it's is an industry that is actually quite small, really, mm. in a mm. sense. And it's always kind of, we go out to the pub. If you work in London, we are all in Soho. We yep. meet each other every day yep. <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> um, and then there is obviously another side to it, which is the photographic side and kind of the artistic side as well mm -hmm. uh, of other sides. Um, so person, being a nice. And Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's that's so so important. Um, you know, having people skills, being a good communicator, being uh, being able to work well in a team, um, not being able to take direction well, and not you know not have an ego or that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, they're they're important things, and that that'll I think that's easier to shine through, uh, especially in a in a smaller company because there's less room to hide. Maybe you can't you can't really coast through with just. Uh, you can't just be the sort of guy that quietly gets his work done and sort of coast along being mm. being quite average. I think it's important to have those people skills as well. Mm. Uh, and I'm sorry, what was the other point? Uh, yeah. Well, no, the next point. Well, so first, it was about the people, obviously, because I think that is we all spend too much time together. <laughs> so absolutely. One is, well, yeah, as, yeah, 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 yeah. as you say, I mean, it's <laughs> it's uh, absolutely. We, we yeah, all, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, of course. It's six o'clock, we all go get beer yeah. on a Friday, so it's, it's nice that the people around you are people that you are happy to hang out with socially as well. Yeah, and, and the second one was more about, so we had the show real, I think that bit we didn't show it, so I want to show it again, but it's more about the day-to-day -day of the job oh, and yeah. kind of this knowing about photography and lighting is, is mm. that side which I think, mm. yeah, one side is your rotor skills and your uh, kind of, comping skills, but it mm. is all about lighting, it's all about mm. the final image, photography, mm. uh, even if it is CG mm. and the whole thing. But It's all about mm. the, uh, the, the little details which people would miss. And it's normally, it's, it's something that you, you, you do it and you're like, no one's ever going to see this, but it's the tiny little things that, mm. that people notice. It's like lens distortion, like, uh, it's, it's things that like make, because you can have these huge CG things and they, they don't, they look just quite off. They're just a little bit off, and it's like reflections. It's uh, lens distortion. It's uh, chromatic aberration. It's it's grain. Grain is a mm. grain is an, is important. <laughs> That's a very important one, isn't it? Oh, That's yeah. quite quite oh, a yeah. difficult yeah. one that people don't realise how mm. important grain is. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just it it just gives another life to your shots, and it's also these, these these tiny little details which kind of set you apart from other people as well. Like like for like especially for people starting in the industry, if you can nail getting those tiny little things right or have like, a, like an idea of how they work, it's, it's going to kind of, it's going to show that you're more keen and you're, you know more yeah. straight away. So that's going to immediately kind of put you above a guy who's just rotoed a load of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I think that's a good point too, that like you can be amazingly good at nuke, but still be a terrible compositor. Yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely. And and you can be, you know, <laughs> a really a really good compositor whilst n almost not knowing nuke yeah. yet. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it all in the end comes down to what does the final shot actually look like, mm. and then the way you went went there is less important. Uh, of course, in the best of worlds, you're an you know, amazing artist and mm. fantastic mm. at nuke. <laughs> <laughs> I think the being the artist part is probably the harder thing to yeah. learn. It's uh, you know it's important to have that eye to to understand how 
as you say, like how lenses work, how, how light interacts with the world. And, uh, you know, you can learn that through doing photography, through doing painting, through any of these means. And, you know, if it means learning the software later, then that's fine. We can, mm. we can teach the software, but it's, it's important to have that artist's eye as, uh, as well. One of the, the best tips I ever got was go on Google and look at references. Whatever <laughs> you're, you're, compo you're comping at the moment, yeah. just Google what does that actually look like yeah. and <laughs> just mimic that. Yeah. I think it goes back to your problem solving thing. If you just know how to use software, it's great when the shot's working. Do your shots always work? <laughs> you know, like, so, and that's what you were saying earlier. You know, you quite quickly will become unstuck. You know, Dan was talking about it earlier. You know, that's where you kind of suddenly realise that actually I only know how to press the buttons in that order when the shot's going right. And it come. And you said every day you solve problems. You know, creative problem solving, and that doesn't come with software. That comes with learning your artistry. You know, knowing your knowing your business. Um, you know, your career that you actually want to go into, yeah. and, and kind I think of probably learning, learning it from it. the ground up too. You know, you have to be great at the fundamentals before you can move on to do the fancy stuff. I think that's a good point. I think even if we have said, yes, you start as a road artist, some people see it sometimes as kind of this dreading thing uh, of having to work as a road artist. Mm. I actually believe that you will never be a good composer if you're no, not really a really good com uh, road artist. No, it gives you those core skills. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I did that year in Paint and Roto and still every, every day there are, there are shots that there's no other way to fix it other than just start painting frame by frame. Yeah. And they're, they're all skills that I learned in, in my most junior role at the beginning, and uh, they're ones that I still use every day. It's, it's definitely important to get those fundamentals down. And they can make or break a shot. We were Absolutely. talking about believability and things like that, and that's, you know, they, they are the things, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, for sure. Cool. So, to wrap it up, I think, uh, what was I going to say? You see, this is the problem of life things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my brain just went blank. Uh, <laughs> um, so we have gone through what's the best part of the job, what's the kind of worst in a sense of what was the first shock, mm. what are the core skills, uh, what is uh, the lighting and kind of the photographic side or the artistic side to it, um, and how personality is a big part of also these jobs. Mm. Is there anything else that, that you think is important to bring on or between the companies to pick to go to work for or anything that you would like to give to the guys, <laughs> or, so must be quite a few people out there. Uh, <laughs> not to put you nervous about it. Uh, <laughs> um, I want to say quickly, we've been talking a lot about uh, entry level positions as artists, but uh, we've kind of touched on being a runner. But like, more often than not, you will start as a runner. Mm. It's just it's just how it's it's because the, the sheer amount of people that are applying it's easier to get a runner's position than going going straight into a paint and rotor mm. or a tracking or a compositing sort of uh, mm. route. So get really good at making a cup of tea <laughs> <laughs> because that's 90% of the job. Mm -hmm. um, but use yeah, that just time as well. I mean, whilst oh, you're, yeah, whilst yeah. you're mm. working as a runner, you know, your day-to-day -day might be running around running, but, you know, that's, that's, where, you're, that's where you have your opportunity to... to tap an artist on the shoulder and sort of show an interest oh, yeah, and, yeah, and learn, the, yeah, learn yeah, those yeah. things, show, show your enthusiasm to, uh, to learn. And, uh, you know, you work on little side projects, find little indie movies or, or a, a friend's music video to work on where you can practice those skills. Mm. Yeah, and I uh, think, uh, like, fr from the get-go, like, be clear about your intentions, you mm. know? Like, you're, you're there as a runner because you want to eventually, you know, yeah. graduate to becoming a uh, uh, an artist there mm. and and just you know let them know that and don't expect them to understand that without you telling because mm. if if you don't you know uh if you're not clear about it they might just go you know yep. give that role to someone who was more clear about that mm. yeah well i mean we all, we all talk don't we it's like who who was who was that guy we didn't we had no idea yeah. he could be there for 6 months and we've never spoke, second a word, spoken a word to him. Yeah, mm. Well, yeah. It's just like everyone like it does seem daunting to kind of uh like you see a room full of people working on a computer with their headphones on it's like oh I can't really talk to them but more often than not they they are more than happy mm. to to sit down with you and show you exactly what they're doing mm. maybe not right at that second mm. like maybe uh when they've got a spare spare minute or 
spared 20 minutes. It's just yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> let's be honest, it's fun to talk about your job. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, if yeah, someone's sure genuinely <laughs> interesting, that's yeah. even better. It's nice to show off your work as yeah. well. Yeah. So yeah. look yeah. at my shot. This so is what I did. Isn't it great? And yeah, someone yeah. who's <laughs> really enthusiastic to learn yeah. that. That's great. <laughs> it definitely uh, validates you as an artist yeah, 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 <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to be like, oh, I'm going to show someone else how to do my job. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, think anything else that we have? Do we have questions from outside? Oh my goodness! Hi, <laughs> hi, hi. So that was awesome and so cool to like hear your stories. And I did lens-based media as well <laughs> many, many, many years ago in photography. And look at me now, another way of VFX. Kind of, yeah. So, uh, been in the industry a long time, but um, yeah, there's so there's been a lot of questions, lots and lots of like ones, and there's, there might be some like life changing advice you might have to give some people. So I'm just putting you right. in that Ooh. position okay. now. <laughs> just, F just FYI. So, um, lots of people, so I'll hit them with the first one. So I have been um, casual game industry for, for a long time, 3D modeling concept, and wishing to shift to film. Do you have any suggestions? We, we, we worked with a guy who was in film, was in games for kind of 10 years and he's he's uh he's a animator generalist mm. mm -hmm. so it's doable mm. yeah for 3d there's certainly uh, a diverse range of backgrounds you can come from we have another another artist who came from architecture uh i mean the thing with gaming more and more there's a crossover with with visual effects as yeah. as you get newer games that really push mm. uh what can be rendered um that's you know, that's getting closer and closer to what we do for yeah, uh, for, totally. for film and television, yeah. and so it's there's there's definitely crossover with the skills here. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I think um, you know again with that, there, there, if if the person in question is having trouble kind of you know getting into the the film industry, it might be because um, he or she is applying for two you know senior jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, you might have worked ten years in in the gaming industry, but. Don't be afraid to to you know go for a junior position yes. mm -hmm. uh, if you're coming into film, and you know if you're good enough you will you yeah. know get promoted up oh, gotcha. in, 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 yeah. in oh, yeah. no time. You yeah. actually you actually did that from graphic design to yeah because your background so like it is it's like all these like creative like you end up in different avenues yeah, like I, how I, you I, did I, it going I went in all, all, all over right the shop down, before yeah, deciding right, yeah. I wanted to specialize yeah uh, yeah I was very much a generalist for a, for a number of years yeah. and. Uh, just yeah, I made the conscious decision that I wanted to specialise in one area, which was which was film, um, film and television VFX, uh, and just cast all that other stuff aside and said, okay. Uh, and it, it was uh, it was a, uh, at the same time like I had to take, I had to go from being in quite a senior position to to a, an entry level position yeah. at, at a facility in order to in yeah. order to do that. And how was that? It was it was. A, a uh, big financial step down. <laughs> <laughs> That's the main takeaway. Yeah. yeah um, but uh, you, you ate know, a lot I, I of Seb beans. You <laughs> ate a lot of beans. <laughs> <laughs> but as as Seb was saying, you know, it, it was a tactical thing because I knew that the yeah. long term uh, yeah. goal of that was that yeah. you know if you can get in there, as long as you're in there and you can show yourself as an artist and what you're capable <laughs> of, then you can you can rise up through those ranks. Mm. It's almost like that patience, right? Yeah. And patience, um, which can be really hard. So um, more questions, uh, sorry, I've, I've got, right, quickly go through these. Um, right, what if you have no schooling and you've learned through YouTube and other means? <laughs> well, that's a <exactly laughs> man right here. Yeah, you, you become yeah. man. Yeah. That's done. You do what Dan did. Yeah. Success story right yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. That was a lot of pressure on me. I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually did have a little note saying, question for Dan. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, we'll keep keep going with the YouTube. Um, Digital Tutors is fantastic. Uh, mm. FHPHD, um, the Foundry site has has great um, has great tutorials, mm. and just yeah, um, get really good at Roto, get really good at Paint, mm. like dabble in in comp, but yeah, really kind of build a solid skill, like a solid uh, foundation. Right? Yeah, yeah, solid bank of kind of work. And I mean, like I I thought it was I always found it difficult to like. How do I get like plates? How do I get footage to work from? But now mm. online, you can get it for free. There's so much stock footage of, mm -hmm. of um, of just like green screen things and uh, and like things with uh, tracking markers and things to roto. I mean, you could even like do one of those YouTube uh, downloaders of a, like a higher. You can download you can, like, YouTube's in 4K now, isn't it? Yeah. So you can 
So you can do that. And, you throw uh, to Dan right now. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do some things and uh, try and write say that. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's yeah. pretty simple in the end. So <laughs> I have... Um, so there's... Um, with all the skill sets discussed, is, is your age a factor that would be a barrier to breaking into visual effects? Mm, I broke into visual effects at the age of 32, oh. so... Yeah. I'd say I'd say not. Yeah. Yeah. Are they saying are they saying too old or too young? I don't know. Cuz I started when Could I was that person 18. disclose that? Eight. Like <laughs> Cuz when did you start? I started when I was 18. Yeah. There you go. So Yeah, I mean, look. Mm, I don't think that's a effect problem. supervisor. Yeah. And like, yeah. So, yeah. We had a a road artist that was in his 40s. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. 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 You can I don't think age is a factor, as long as you still have your like, mental faculties and you can... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how old you are. Yeah, I'm not no. going to cut your food for you. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you can, can totally change it up. Um, OK, no film school, only self-taught. Colleague cautioned against working for free to build portfolio. Said ask for $30 an hour. Thoughts? Mm. It's so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm in two minds here. I'm not a fan of free work, mm. uh, just because it's the same thing as free software and free things. <laughs> I think you should put a price on what you do, yes. and yeah. it is important to do it. Yes. Uh, obviously, bear in mind, you're a junior person, you're learning, so put the price that you think is, is that, but I think there must be a price. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's my personal point of view, yeah. and yeah. I have always mm. been on that yeah. side. I yeah. have always told my students to do that. Yeah. Um, Agree. Don't try and charge what an artist actually charge. Mm. Obviously, that's because that's what the, the other side is. People go like, okay, so it is. It, it, I'm not getting paid, so I'm not going to do it. They're like, well, no, because you need the footage to be able to do it and get the experience to actually get mm. into the industry. So, mm. just be mindful of that. I think that's mm. my point. I don't know what you guys think of this. I, I, I was going to absolutely echo that point. It's, an, mm. uh, it's definitely a necessary evil to do those low-paid uh, projects yeah. to start off to. Uh, to get those shots in your showreel when you've got nothing in there. Um, but as you say, if, if you do work for free sometimes, it's, it's people think it's worth nothing, but it's... Yeah. It depends I've who, though, really. If it's your friends they're asking, or like yeah, friends of friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, don't be weird about I mean, that. Yeah. Yeah. If you're I mean, don't be weird like about that one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying that, and I've done plenty of jobs for free. Where yeah, I've, I've, done, been I've <laughs> done quite a few, and it's like, it's, it's helped, I've learned a lot. Yeah. And but like, the toxic word for me is exposure. If someone says, "Oh, this would be great for exposure," oh, it's just be like, good for your real. This yeah. would be great yeah. exposure. Oh, mm. that, that's when you just walk away. I think. <laughs> yeah, because uh, they have no intention of paying you. Then. But it diminishes your it diminishes yeah. you, your craft, your skills. Like you know, like mm. you are yeah. wor you're mm. worth it. You're worth it. <laughs> just flip but, my head. The, but you are. You're worth it. But on the you flip are. side, there are there are low paid projects that I think you know all all entry level artists should. I mean, go on. Uh, Nerdio, go on, uh, Mandy. I've I've done plenty of those sort of mm. low-paid ones just to just yeah. to get my foot in the door and get yeah. some shots for my reel. They can be fun as well. They can be fun to like work for someone, <coughs> mm. and they're like so have because if you've only been working for yourself and you have this vision of what you want, then if when it's it's kind of different when you work for someone else. Mm. Even if it's even if you if you're working for free or you're working for a sandwich, it's going to be their 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 final thoughts are going to be different to what, what your final thoughts are. Mm -hmm. So there'll be this dialogue which will prepare you. It's, it's probably the closest you can get to like, having a, like, a production environment and like, working with clients, I'd say. Okay. And, okay. and also teaches you about managing time again. Mm. Mm. So yeah, especially when you set up at midnight saying, I'm not getting paid to be here, why am I? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I should have finished this shot earlier. Yeah. Yeah. That's when you get thrown the sandwich, right? Mm. <laughs> Okay, so someone, so the guy about the age thing is really happy with the answer. He's 40, sorry, we've just outed it. Well, he's done it on Twitter, I'm hoping. <laughs> but, like, he's really happy to know that, mm, so yeah. that's really cool. Um, so, uh, ooh, any tips for an editor making the switch to be a VFX editor? Same, the, same understand, sort of thing, really. Understand what, the, what is needed in certain shots. Mm. I think that's, that, and understand the technicalities I'm really good friends with a lot of editors, and I think the major issue when we are onlining a show or trying to get the footage chain or the distribution is always that bit of not knowing what is needed mm. on the BFX side. Mm. Mm. Uh, so which plates you actually need, which... So it is not only the shot that the editor cut, it's all the other elements that surround that shot yes. that we need. Uh, so I think that's part of the BFX editor mm. uh, to know. Cool. 
Uh, if you haven't worked on any professional projects, is it okay to mock up promo campaign? He's an exports promo. Is it okay? Uh, I'm sorry, what was the question? Yeah. Just when I, said, when I just said it, I was like, I probably said that really quickly. I'm sorry to the person who asked that. Um, if you haven't worked on any professional projects, mm -hmm. is it okay to do a mock-up promo campaign? Uh, ex for example, a sports promo. Could that be something that would be... Oh, to like show off your yeah. skill, like, like yeah, sure. uh, so make a fake thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure, yeah. 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 So yeah. If you don't, as long as you don't pass off anyone else's work as your own, mm. or like, yeah, yeah, yeah. do anything like to copyright, I suppose? Yeah. Like, yeah. If you're going to um, well, commercial... I mean, a, a showreel is, is about showing your skills, mm. you know, and, and that's, that's all we're interested in seeing. Yeah, I mean, bear in mind, if, if you have uh, nothing to nothing to show apart from tutorial work. I mean, I'd, I'd rather see a project that you've created your own brief and, and, and yeah. done something for than, than, you know, that same tutorial shot that we've seen uh, yeah. a hundred, that's a, that's a good hundred one times. About, that's a good, about, good thing about tutorial. Yeah, keep the, it off your showreel. The, the shots are created <laughs> so the tutorial works. They don't work ever. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it, it works 20% of the time, and it, it's a definite skill that can help to a point. But it's, a, it's a good way of learning software, but yeah. it doesn't teach you anything about real but real, real specific sort of things. Yeah, yeah. sometimes it just because because the shots are <laughs> set up to work like perfectly mm. to showcase that this this skill this uh, this node works this way. Yeah, mm. and, and we then, all have seen the tutorials, so we all know that it's a tutorial yeah. shot. Yeah, and <laughs> also, but it's also the thing about keep it short, yeah, keep best short. staff, keep yeah. it short, keep you know best staff like get people wanting to see more, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, in so I've got, I'm just going to do two more. Um, so uh, I've got zero 3D experience, but do you have a lot of roto and paint experience? How important is knowledge of 3D? To a roto artist? <sighs> I don't know. Uh, Mine needs some help. Four percent. So, <laughs> so I guess, I guess, I guess the question is like um, coming into might might need this person to help us out a little bit on this. So I've got zero 3D experience, but do have a lot of roto and paint, ex paint experience. How important is knowledge of 3D? I guess that harks back to that whole thing of like you were saying about if you've got if you've got the the skills and the creativity, mm -hmm. you can learn that stuff on the job. It's about having your almost like your foundations nice and solid and the mm -hmm. creative element that you can be taught that stuff, right? Yeah. Well, I think probably if if that person is thinking of kind of what we do daily, in a sense, mm -hmm. and, and because obviously, yes, there is a 3D space in Nuke, but the point, you, you just need the basic knowledge of 3D, and yeah. probably you will learn that in the job yeah. later on. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we use it as a tool to create 2D. And I, I always say that to people when they all go, oh, but is Nuke going to become a 3D package and it has the 3D and everything? It's like, mm. well, not really. What we use the 3D space is to make the 2D work way easier. Mm -hmm. It's not about actually doing 3D. We're never going to go and do a full animation inside Nuke. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, so, so it's more about that side, I imagine. So it's, mm -hmm. it's something that you will learn on the different yeah. cases so it's, and use it as a tool. Not, yeah. not, not, it's not a core mm -hmm. thing, I would say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we get better and better renderers available within Nuke, but it doesn't mean yeah. it's going to replace uh, Maya as a, as yeah. a core yeah. 3D mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, tool. I mean, for this person, and like, correct me if, if you disagree, but I, I, I would say get as good as you can at yeah. what your actual craft is going to be. You know, I, I, if, if you're going to go into Comp and 2D, then just get really good yeah. at Comp and 2D, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, in, including Roto, if, if yeah. you're just getting into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, proudest moment for each of you so far. <laughs> And I'm going to start with you, Richard, in your career. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that, uh, your proudest, proudest moment. Uh, probably, oh, now you've put me on the spot now. Okay, I'll <laughs> let you think about it and go on All this right. question. Um, my dad called me and said he said, seen my, my name. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is, that is. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm an emotional record, <laughs> so this is like going to tip me over. Yeah. Um, I got my first compositing credit on Spectre last year. That's pretty, <laughs> which pretty, pretty proud. Yeah, Very good. that's so awesome. That's probably like validating that. Twenty-two. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Mm. Really nice. Nice one, Dan. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think my 
I, uh, my first role as a compositor uh, was on Hugo, and that got then yes, awarded the, uh, the Oscar. The Oscar for the vi visual yeah. effects, and uh, yeah, that was great. Just yeah. to say, wow, that, that was. I was part of that. that was part, yeah, I was yeah, part of that. That's pretty awesome. Mm. Okay, what do you see in the future? What do you aspire <laughs> for the next three to five years for yourselves? Mystic Seb. Oh, me? Yeah. Me personally. <laughs> um, well, I, all, well, all of you. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, um, I touched on it before, but like ev every day you learn something new and I just hope that I, I keep learning and growing. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm in a very good spot at Blue Bolt at the moment, I, I believe. Uh, I love my job and I love the people I work with and mm. I hope I get to do, you know, keep doing it. So. Mm -hmm. mm. Awesome. Yeah, I've, uh, well, similar thing, just, just, just to continually improve, you're always working on, uh, you know, bigger and uh, more, more diverse projects and yeah I'm, I'm just more of the same but but better yeah <laughs> I, yeah you should always I, I think it's important to look back at the stuff you're doing sort of two or three years ago and say oh that's you know I was so proud of that at the time but this mm. now looks so amateur to me compared to what mm. I'm doing now that's mm. just shows that you're improving constantly I'm gonna say Star Wars probably I want to be. I want to be on Star Wars. You want to be on Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars. That's all right. That's totally acceptable. Um, I so I mean I I've loved listening to you guys tonight, and I'm so grateful that you've come in um, to have a chat. And honestly, I just I see amazing things, amazing, amazing things. And it is. It's like it's, you know. It's a tough. It's a tough one, but a great one to like be part of, right? Um, mm. So we're gonna. If could you stick around, just possibly for like ten more minutes, once we go off air, if there's any more questions that have come in, just to answer them on on Twitter. So if anyone wants to has, put some through that they just don't want visible, maybe can we do it through <laughs> a chat? Oh, no, we can't. Okay. See, I'm. Oh, Pathetic. Um, right, okay, well, on that note, um, uh, thank you again. Round of applause for everybody and for Nikki and Juan as well. Thank you. Thank you, Blue Bowl. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and thank you very much, Blue Bowl. Incredibly busy. We really appreciate it. Um, there'll be a recording this available for you to watch at your leisure, but thank you again for joining us around the world, and we will see you somewhere very, very soon. Thank you, and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.